Kia ora folks, Rouse the Bushman here. Well, it's finally summer. Um, I didn't make it during the time I wanted to, but um, yeah, well, it's Boxing Day today. I was originally supposed to come up yesterday. Been working six days and been quite busy. So I'm planning to stay up here tonight, scout out a bit more. Um, so I'm back at my backcountry hut. Nothing's changed at all, except for the grass. She's a bit different. There's a whole bunch of grass, but it's pretty good because I've just seen all the trail runs of rabbits and hares. And it is 26th of December, and yeah, I'm just up here for one night, just for tonight. My original plans for this trip was to originally go to now over here. There's a ridge line. There's another ridge line, and then there's another ridge line. So two ridge lines behind. This hill over here, I don't know if you can see it there far well. Now I brought a lot of things. My whole pack weight is about 10 kilos. Okay. Most of it I don't need for an overnighter. As I said though, I'm going to be stashing a lot of items. Um, for when I come back. At the end of this week I shall say. Okay, so. Here we go. Brought my carry more. This is a Kalahari, this is the lightweight, ultra lightweight. I'm running a lightish setup. I've saved, but I've saved about a kilo from the last time, so that's not too bad. Now, this is all the stuff I brought. I'll show you guys what I brought. Okay, my new ultra light, Ferry Down Equator. It's a left hand zip, it's a summer bag. Um, since it is summer. Thing weighs just under a kilo including stuff set. Brought my bivy as usual. This is actually not for this outing. So I got my fur down. This is new. This is off trading. I got this for ten dollars. Ten dollars including shipping. Okay. Got my Diddy Hammocks tarp usual. Still, I still haven't opened this. Brand new pack of a uh, parachute cord. June 550 military grade. Still haven't opened it. Got my wool gloves, got some spare tinder for one start of fire. Got spare clothes in here. So I just got spare merino, a spare lightweight uh, quick drying shirt, a short sleeve quick drying shirt, a pair of socks, um, a merino beanie, etc. This is uh, three quarters of a litre, so 750 mils of meths for my homemade meth stove. Okay, you gotta have the old eco tanker. Been using this on the alcohol stove at home and um, it's pretty great. A German World War II replica, not a genuine, but a replica canteen, canteen set. I only brought it because A, I can carry it on my belt if I have to. B, it's got a cup. So I'm not trying to be all military surplus and all that. But yeah. I've got my Zeltbahn. Now I featured this actually last year. Um, I've tried it a few times. I've set up like mainly at home. So this is at home. I have stayed under it. It's actually not too bad. It's pretty cramped. Don't get me wrong. Um, if you team that with a bivy and a foam mat, you're pretty good. Got my knife as typical. It's a Svikin. S-V-I-K-I-N. Svikin. And basically, I was, to be honest and be frank, I was trolling the auction, okay? I was trolling the auction, or what they call sharking, where you, use, you place multiple bids at the same time to drive the price up. I down there on purpose. Main reason why is because it's a fairy down. This is a genuine fairy down, anodized aluminum. It's a real tough aluminum cook set. Some of the things in here it does not come with a cook kit. What's in here is instant coffee. It's um, Nestle instant coffee. You just add hot water. It's got your milk, sugar, and coffee all in one. Okay. This is a uh, Milo premix. So it's just basically Milo with Milk powder, no sugar, no need sugar. Okay, this is for the meth stove. So when I'm traveling out and about, that's why I got my bulk here. I can fill it up, take it to wherever I need to, and use the alcohol stove if I wanted to. This is my homemade alcohol stove. These the it's it's similar to a fancy feast cat stove. It's the one with the pot stands. This is the pot gripper for when you grip the pot like such. Now, got a spare light in here, I've got a spoon. 
Now this comes with a pan and two bowls. So it's a pretty pretty neat little set. She is pretty weighty. It's about 320 grams. I roughly weighed it. This is a homemade scroggin mix. That's just a, basically a homemade um, scroggin mix, trail mix, gorp, fan. There's so many names for it. My initial capital for this was $12, including Ziploc bags. These are the Zipvac bags. Okay. Right. Now, I made about two and a half kilos. So, for $12 investment capital, that's not too bad to get two and a half kilos. Okay. Now, this is my homemade. It's similar to how the NZ Army military MREs are made. It's more of a bush ration pack, a food ration pack. People call them rat packs. Now, the initial capital to purchase all the qu uh, items for this, right, was pretty expensive. It worked out to be about $50, right? Uh, just a bit under. Um, I made six of these, and roughly a cost per of ration, $8.91, which is not a bad win. Rations of the same calorie density are roughly 100 to 150 grams heavier, and they weigh our cost three times as much. Um, they can cost up to thirty dollars for a ration pack. This is a homemade one, right? This weighs in about they all roughly weigh in about six eighty seven forty grams, roughly. So all I've got in here is uh tuna spread. It's the one you buy with the tuna spread and crackers. You got some tea bags, I've got some scroggin, your trail mix, scorp, whatever you choose to call it. I've got a chocolate bar, I've got a mushroom soup mix in there, or spring vegetable soup mix. It's just plain flavours I like. Okay. I've got some breakfast biscuits. Um, I've got the better version, the Wheat Bix version of the breakfast biscuits. I've got some crackers in here. I've got a chocolate bar in there. I've got a couple um, Oreo type cookie sandwich cookies. I've got a pack of noodles. And I've got some... Uh, Tortillas. Now the tortillas have actually been sitting here for about a good month. I've actually, um, because they're zip vacked, um, I sucked all the air out of the Ziploc bag, put it in, and then zip vac all the air out. It's just a handheld pump you can use to draw all the air out. Now these are actually still fine to eat as is. They do have a lack of oxygen air smell. Yeah, they're still edible, and they're still um, good to eat. You could probably store these in a cool, dry place for up to maybe two months, probably more. I'm up to a month on my ration packs, which have um, portillas in them, and they're still edible. Seems to be okay, so I'm going to try and get two months out of them. Just a couple of quick questions I'd like to answer before we start. I'm going to do a separate video about this, but some folks on YouTube find it quite disappointing that some people have caches or stashes of equipment. This is not my thoughts or my opinions, this is just brutally simple. If you have land that you frequent light, right, right, and you're pretty sure you can ascertain quite certainly that hardly anybody visits the area, it should be okay and there's nothing wrong with storing certain items. Maybe a tarp, a cheap tarp, a bivy, maybe some vacuum packed food or freeze dried or canned food, perhaps some spare cordage. You can stick that in a dry bag, you can stick it in the bucket, an ammo can box, whatever you choose. There should not be a problem with that. It is basically up to individual preference, particularly if they're frequenting areas they tr usually travel to. Like me, I do have caches around here. Now, obviously, um, I'm not going to tell you exactly where they are. <laughs> For obvious reasons but there are caches around here all around no food but um just useful items like paracord maybe a poncho inexpensive though i should say if you can't understand where a person on youtube will and playing their real life why they have caches um try it yourself have a little cache there is nothing wrong with it nothing wrong with it at all particularly if it's going to tie you over for your next few outings or you have a lack of storage space in your pack. There's nothing wrong with it. As long as you do it in an uh, eco-environmentally friendly way. And in a manner that is inconspicuous. 
to others that may tread near your area, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to do a separate video about my... It's not a survival cache, I know. I have a buddy in, um, a bushcraft buddy in uh, Ukraine at the moment, from Bushcraft Ukraine, that's his channel. He has caches too, and so do I, as for those who have not seen my channel before. This is um, Moldy land, by the way, this is not public, crown or private, this is Moldy land. Whole different laws apply. A bushcraft cache, you could say, experiment video series that I'm starting to. Uh, I know my my buddy uh, Bushcraft Ukraine, it's a shout out to you. He initially gave me some ideas about the buckets and that. Um, I've actually been using inexpensive dry bags uh, to store certain things. No food, as I said, no food, no water. Just storing basic things. The Bushcraft Cash series. I've purchased some relatively inexpensive things for that. But it'll be on YouTube probably next year um, after editing. I've already started uh, filming bits and bobs of it, so that's good.